Hi everyone, welcome. Let's study biology together. To receive notification of new biology videos, please click the subscribe button below to subscribe. Thank you. We will continue to study Chapter 2 in this video. We will be studying Cell Biology and Cell Organization, specifically Part 3.2, about the permanent tissues, which are the dermal tissues and the ground tissues. However, vascular tissues will be studied in the third video, 3.3. In the last video, we have already studied the overview of the types of plant tissues and we have studied about the meristematic tissues or meristem. Leaving the permanent tissues to be discussed, we have already studied the types of meristematic tissues that is the apical meristem and lateral meristem. So in this video, we are going to study about the dermal tissue and the ground tissue. Vascular tissues will be studied in the next video. This memory aid or mnemonic to remember the different types of plant tissues was given in the last lesson. Mary puts delicious grapes in the vase, which stands for the meristematic tissue, permanent tissue, dermal tissue, ground tissue, and vascular tissue. Here's a tip to help you remember it and strengthen your memory of this mnemonic and what it represents. Write out this phrase together with the name of the tissues below on a piece of paper and paste it on a wall somewhere in your house. As you constantly view it every day, it will strengthen the memory of this phrase and also the names of the tissues. The general functions of plant tissues. We have already discussed the functions of the meristematic tissues. They produce new cells through cell division for the growth of the plant. For B, permanent tissues, the dermal tissue generally is used for protection from injury and also for absorption of water from the soil and allowing the diffusion of carbon dioxide into the leaf via the stoma. For ground tissue, its basic function is to provide support to the plant and also it helps to carry out photosynthesis and store food substances in the cells. For vascular tissue, it aids in the transport of substances in the plant. So now, zooming in on the permanent tissues, which comprises the dermal tissue, ground tissue, and vascular tissues, we will start to discuss the types of tissues here, starting with the dermal tissue, which comprises the epidermis and specialized cells such as root hair cells and gut cells. The first type of permanent tissue is the dermal tissue. An example of the dermal tissue is the epidermal tissue. Epi means on and dermal means skin. So epidermal tissues are surface tissues and they form the outermost layer of the plant body. Something like its skin. The epidermal tissues are used for protection against injuries. 
and their structure is that they form a single layer of flat cells. Example, the epidermis on the leaves of plants. So, location is that it covers the surface of leaves, stems and roots. What are the functions of dermal tissues? Firstly, the epidermal tissue, such as the epidermis of the leaf, protects the plant from injury, as it is the outermost layer on the surface of the leaf. It protects the inner layers, such as the mesophyll cells, from injury. Secondly, the surface of the epidermis on the leaf is coated with a waxy cuticle, as can be seen on the right, to decrease the water loss by evaporation from the leaf. Thirdly, the root hair cell is a specialized epidermal cell with projection, such called the root hair, to increase its surface area to absorb water more efficiently from the soil. And lastly, gut cells control the opening of the stoma, as we will see in the next part. Let us look at an unusual type of cell in the dermal tissue. It is called the root hair cell. The root hair cell is a specialized epidermal cell that has changed in structure so that it can carry out its function more efficiently. Here's a picture of a seedling which has grown a root. In the root, there are many root hair cells which have grown root hairs. Let us enlarge one root hair cell. As you can see, the root hair cell has grown a long projection called a root hair. This root hair increases the surface area of the root so that it can absorb water more quickly. So the root hair cell is a specialized epidermal cell that helps the root to absorb water more quickly. Let us look at another type of special cell in the dermal tissue. This is the gut cell, which is also a specialized epidermal cell. This picture shows you two gut cells surrounded by the normal epidermal cells. They are bean shaped and they have special adaptations to help them open the stoma or the pore in the leaves. Each gut cell has a thinner, elastic outer wall and a thicker, less elastic inner wall. Apart from that, a gut cell also has many chloroplasts. These two characteristics help the gut cell to open the stoma when there is sunlight. This allows the gas called carbon dioxide to diffuse into the leaves for photosynthesis. Thus, the gut cell is a specialized epidermal cell that regulates the opening of the stoma to allow carbon dioxide to diffuse into the leaf for photosynthesis. We have finished discussing the first type of permanent tissue, which is the dermal tissue. Let us proceed to discuss the second type of permanent tissue, which is the ground tissue. The ground tissue is located in the spaces between the epidermis and the vascular bundles that transport substances. Referring to the picture, of the cross section of the plants the first one shows the cross section of the leaf then the cross section of the stem and lastly the cross section of the roots and the yellow parts indicate the ground tissues in the leaf stem and root whereas the red parts represent the epidermis and the 
blue parts represent the location of the vascular bundles. As you can see, the ground tissues fills up the spaces between the epidermis and the vascular bundles in every part of the plant. The three functions of the ground tissues are number one, to support the plant, number two, for storage of food, and number three, to carry out photosynthesis to produce organic food substances. There are three types of ground tissue. Number one, parenchyma tissue. Number two, colenchyma tissue. Number three, sclerenchyma tissue. Remember that all of these tissues end with the word chyma. Now the first type of ground tissue is the parenchyma tissue. Think of the word parent and then chyma. What is the structure of the parenchyma tissue? Parenchyma tissue consists of parenchyma cells. The structure of the cells are that they have thin cell walls, as you can see from the picture, large vacuoles, and they are rounded in shape. So what are the three functions of the parenchyma tissue? Firstly, they store starch, protein and water in their cells. Secondly, mesophyll cells are specialized parenchyma cells in the leaves. Please refer to the cross section of the leaf shown. You can see the two layers of mesophyll cells. The upper layer is called the palisade mesophyll cell and the lower layer are the spongy mesophyll cells. Both are mesophyll cells that contain chloroplasts to carry out photosynthesis so that the plant can produce organic food substances. So these cells are very important to the plant and they are actually specialized parenchyma cells. Lastly, parenchyma tissue can give support to the plant although they have thin cell walls. They do this by becoming turgid or full of water and in this way they will be able to provide support to the plant. We will talk about the rigidity of the cells in the next chapter. The second type of ground tissue is the colenchyma tissue. Colenchyma tissue are made up of colenchyma cells. What is the structure of the colenchyma cell? Colenchyma cells are living cells and their cell walls are thickened with cellulose, especially at the corners. They have more cellulose than the normal plant cell. The function of the colenchyma tissue is that the strong cell walls are thickened by cellulose to support the young non-woody stems in the herbaceous plants. Herbaceous plants are non-woody plants that are small and have a short lifespan. The third type of ground tissue is the sclerenchyma tissue, which is made up of sclerenchyma cells. Sclerenchyma cells are dead cells and do not have any cytoplasm or nuclei. Thus, each cell has a hollow center. Their cell walls are thickened with lignin so that they are able to provide support to the mature parts of the plant, such as the stem. In conclusion, there are three types of ground tissue, parenchyma tissue, colenchyma tissue, and sclerenchyma tissue that provide support to the plant in different ways. That's all for this lesson. In the next lesson, we will continue to study about the permanent tissues that is, the vascular tissues. You will also learn how to make a model of one of the plant cells. And lastly, we will learn some techniques of answering essay questions. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video.